Sorry, the audio quality sucks, guys. Hello to the 30 people who watch my videos. Um, I've wanted an excuse to do a talking video again for a while, especially one about Word Girl, because as you all know, I'm obsessed right now. And after seeing uh, DJ Sad Bean's video on ranking every Word Girl character, uh, go subscribe to them. I'll link them in the description or pinned comment or wherever I decide to do things today. Um, so I decided to do my own. I'm using a different tier list than they did by Cat the Fantasy one I'll link it in the pinned comment or description or again, wherever I put that info today. Uh, two things before we start. One, self-promotion. I'm working on a Word Girl fan continuation. Please check it out. I still need voice actors for a lot of the large characters, including Dr. Two Brains and Toby. And you don't need professional equipment. I don't even have that myself. I'm recording this under a blanket, literally. I just need to be able to hear what you're saying without lots of background noise. Um, the entire script for the first episode is done. Some of the art is done. We have plenty of other ideas and like episode synopses. We're just focusing on getting the first one out right now and voices are the main thing we need. And two is this is extremely subjective and super biased. And I understand this is just a children's show and isn't to be taken seriously, which is why it's fun for me to take seriously. I like adding lore and angst and character where it may not be. So just know that, yes, I'm aware this is a show for children and I have interest in and a passion for it regardless. Aside from that intro, this is mostly unscripted, so I apologize that it's most likely a mess. Let's start with what our tiers actually are. Uh, first of all, we have uh, Chaz tier for Chaz. Then we have I Will Die For You, and then I Will Die For You Again, for the characters who are my absolute favorites. Next, I Will Die For You, but only once. Also my absolute favorites, just less absolute. Then we have Yes. For the good boys that I would that I would still die for, but I, I can't put them in those tiers. The other one is no hard feelings for characters I'm mostly passive towards, like passive to relatively positive. I don't I don't really care about them, but I, I like them because I like most of the characters in the show. Eh, it's for the characters like I have no real opinions towards, or maybe don't like a little bit, but n don't really like hate or outright dislike. That tier is. Uh, for the characters, I want to metaphorically uh, hold that emoji up to. And the last tier is don't know or care for the characters, that, for like the t few characters that I don't actually know or care about. So, this might shock you all, but... There we go. Let's start with the narrator. The narrator! Oh, this is hard. Oh, uh, he might... Mm. I'll put him in I will die for you but only once I love him but I feel like there are characters that I love so much that he isn't purely matched with which is unfortunate because I love him so much next for Becky and Word Girl um, I'll go with the narrator she is a great pro to be honest she's a great protagonist like kid shows barely ever have a protagonist that, like, you actually care about or have a personality or have flaws that aren't just, eh, episode to episode. Like, she has consistent flaws and a consistent character, and she's, like, actually fun instead of just some boring, like, carbon copy, uh, random, random himbo you picked up off the street. Like, she has a character. She has, like, emotions and interesting dynamics with all the characters, and she's a great protagonist. Uh, next is Amazing Rope Guy. He goes in yes. I didn't have any opinions towards him, but then I discovered that people ship him with Miss Power, and that makes me laugh. So, he goes further up there. Also, he's just so ignored, and, like, wimpy, and I find that endearing, and I sympathize for him. Bambi, I will die for you, but only once. I love Bambi. I will, part of me wants to put him higher just because I want to give him the love that he never gets, but Bampy is, I love him, I love him, he's a sweet old soul, and, like, they keep the fact that he knows, uh, Becky's identity, which is, like, that's fun, that, I, I enjoy that, I enjoy that that comes back, I enjoy that it's him, I just enjoy him, he's funny, and he's sweet, uh, next is Bo Handsome, I love Bo Handsome, he's the worst, and I love him, uh, I want to write 
an AU with Bo Handsome and then may I have a word kids. Uh where one of the kids, probably Phil, because it's funniest if it's him, uh, is like actually also from another planet or actually also uh has superpowers and all the kids go off to like fight crime but only he only that one has powers and they're not very good and they're just really bad at it. And I want Bo Handsome to be their Stephen Box Lightner. I want him to eventually also turn into a villain tragically. I want it to be the story of Word Girl and Steven, except with the May I Have a Word kids and their game show dad. Because I need I need him to be their slowly going insane, tired tired game show dad. He he can get fused with a bird or something. He likes bird watching. I don't know. Anyways, I will die for him. I used to hate him, and that hatred slowly morphed into me loving him. Okay. Uh the grocery store guy, not much to say about him. He's very funny though. Uh part of me wants to put him a little higher, but I don't know. I like him though. Big left hand guy. He goes in yes. He he's good. I relate to him. He's a he's a fine dude, good character. I don't have any like real emotions towards him, but he's fine. Uh Brent. He goes in no hard feelings, I'd say. No, maybe he goes in yes. Maybe I have to move Amazing Rope Guy up then. Because I feel like I like him less than Amazing Rope Guy. But whatever the case, um, he's fine. I used to have kind of a grudge against him because I thought the episode with Miss Question and Reginald was amazing. And then I was mad whenever suddenly he was the one up with Miss Question. But I have grown to like that ship, so I'm okay with him. He, he's just a sweet little guy. He's been done dirty. His brother's doing him dirty. Hate that. Uh, the butcher? My innocent little man. I will die for him. Only once, but I will die for him. I will die for this man. Teach him some words. Let him speak. Captain Tangent. Uh, no hard feelings. I don't hate him. I, I can't, I can't bring myself to hate him. He's, he's just fun and quirky. Uh, but he's kind of forgettable, so, yeah. This guy, Charlie, that's his name, he goes an eh. I don't have any negative feelings towards him. I just don't really care about him as much. Chuck's mother, eh. She's terrible. She's terrible, but I don't, like, hate her, like, my my insides don't start boiling when I think about her, so she's fine. Uh, Chuck, he goes in yes. I like Chuck not as much as some other people do, but he has he has some really good episodes. I like him. Good solid villain. Mrs. McAllister. She goes in eh because she barely speaks, but her character is still super inconsistent. I feel like like. Uh, if you just, I like looking at the background of things and people's expressions, and just watching her expressions, she ranges from seeming proud of Toby whenever he's obviously done something wrong, to not caring, to being super mad, and it feels super inconsistent, uh, and that annoys me when I was trying to figure out whether, like, she was, like, a low-key abusive parent, or whether she was, like, act, like, disciplining her child like a normal parent, so she goes in eh. The teacher guy, I don't really care about him, so I'm going to put him in the gun category because uh, I don't really care about him, and I need to put someone down there. Colonel Giggle Cheeks, uh, he goes in yes. Now, I understand most people probably don't have any emotions towards him, but I was waiting that whole movie for him to suddenly join Word Girl's side because even Miss Power was being, like, Miss Power was being mean to even him, like, and I was expecting him to, like, turn on her, but he didn't. And I don't know. D that made him stick out to me. I, I don't really know. Also, he can, like, stretch and contort his body in a, like, creepy eldritch horror kind of way. And I think that has a lot of fan art potential. I want eldritch Colonel Google Cheeks. Now for Dave. I will die for Dave. I love Dave so much. 
innocent little man, a little too nice, but innocent little man, uh, in Word Girl Rewired, he is, which is my fan continuation thing, uh, he likes Beatrice, uh, and Beatrice is just completely oblivious, because David is a sweet soul, and he keeps forgiving her, and is so eager to do it, and I refuse to believe that he doesn't like her, so that's canon, just sweet man, no thoughts, head empty, 10 out of 10. Eileen, no hard feelings. I, I really like Birthday Town, because she and Mr. Big have a super fun dynamic. Like, it's just super funny. Uh, I can't remember which episode it is, but I like the one where she, like, befriends Exposition Guy. Uh, and then also it's like a pet, ener like, the energy monster is a pet. It's so cute. I love it. Like, that's amazing. And that's why she's a little, that's why she's higher than, like, eh, or the gun. Because, like, she's fun with other characters. But most of her episodes are just kind of meh. Uh, and, yeah, her voice can get kind of annoying. I hate her less than other people do, though. I don't really hate her. Exposition, exposition guy? Uh, I will die for him, but only once. Uh, this man is... First of all, he makes me laugh, and I... Yes, I love him, because my... And, and my brother hates him, which makes me love him more. Uh, because I feel the need to defend him. Also, he Loki forgot his wife in the episode Chuck. He Loki forgets who his wife is, and I know it's a joke, but it's still like, what's what's happening to this poor man? Why can't he remember his wife? Like, what's going on? He didn't even remember what was his house. Uh, get this man some therapy, uh, before he gets everywhere at the end of time. Um, Glenn Furblam. He goes in, in the gun. I don't actually uh, hate him. Like, as much as a lot of I feel like it's like 90% of people hate him. And then 10% love him. And I'm going to put him down here. Because I... I don't like... I can't even like say I hate him. Like, his episodes are fine. I just... He, he looks like a Reddit mod. And... Granny Mae... Hot take, Gr Granny Mae goes, nah. I, <sighs> Granny Mae's gimmick is so fun. She's, she can be funny. Her gimmick is so fun. Like, and I love the concept of her. But I think part of why I don't like her as much as, like, a villain is because most of the villains, most of the villains have, like, either a fun dynamic with Word Girl or with someone else, like, Dr. Two Brains, fun dynamic with Word Girl. Toby, fun dynamic with Word Girl. Um, the Butcher, fun dynamic with Word Girl and just anything he interacts with. Um, and, like, Mr. Big and Leslie have a fun dynamic. But I don't think Granny Mae has that. And it's disappointing because her gimmick is so funny and she makes me laugh sometimes. But I can't really care about her because, I don't know. It's unfortunate, though. Uh, Great Granny Mae? She's a sweetie, and her episode is so fun. She goes in no hard feelings. I put her higher, but... I p actually, I'm putting her higher. Yeah, she goes higher. Uh, Guy Rich. Um, he, he goes in eh. I don't care about him. His episode is fine. I just don't... I don't have any feelings towards him. No thoughts, head empty. Uh, this guy. Can't remember his name for the life... Uh, let me, I, don't, I can't remember his name for the life of me. What the... What's his name? Yeah, what's his name? Uh, word girl scam guy. I said scam guy. Why, why no word girl, uh, Sal? Is that his name? No. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Robo, Robo, Villain Store, How Hard Bargain, that's his name, I remembered it all by myself, um, he goes, 
no hard feelings because he's under I wouldn't care about him except he's underrated and I like that I just like him he's funny him like helping both sides get a lot of money like his episodes were just fun he's fun I like him I feel like he has potential but this but unfortunately like just like fan potential like give me a fan fiction about him give me a fan fiction about his robot parts and all the superheroes he mentions and please uh meatloaf goes up there too uh he is a sweetheart and i love him but he, and he goes higher than charlie just because he speaks so it's easier for me to get a personality from him it makes me care about him more huggy goes right next to him huggy's Huggy's my sister giggles every single time uh Huggy comes on screen and it's so funny like not even if he's doing anything funny just if he makes any sort of noise and I think that is and that has caused him to grow on me also there are just times where he's just a tired like older brother and I think I love that for him 10 out of 10 invisible I will die for him Sweet little ADHD man. This man is the definition of ADHD, hyperactivity, no thoughts, head empty. I love him. I will die for him. Amazing. Uh, Johnson? Eh. I don't care about it. I don't, I don't care. Like, he's fine. Uh, and also definitely Violet's brother. I won't accept. I, I don't know if that was intentional, but I feel, but even if it wasn't, like, it's canon in my heart. They they speak, like, in that same weird way. They both have, like, the exact same color of hair. Like, and Violet seems to only live with her mom, too. So, like, yeah, maybe that's her, like, half-brother. Or they, they both live with different parents. I don't know. But whatever the case, I just, meh. Uh, Kid Potato will also go there. I don't remember most of his episodes. He was fine, though. He was enjoyable. Like, his episodes were enjoyable because it gave, like, the butcher someone to interact with. I like them fine. I just don't really have any opinions towards him. The Learner. Uh, he goes in yes because he's a chaotic man. And I applaud the fact that he only causes chaos. I like his whole thing with not... I, I find his last episode, I think... It, uh, I want to say it was Art in the Park. Maybe it was. It was the episode where the royal dandy gets gets destroyed, and that makes me super sad. Uh, but he's voiced by Weird Al, so that's a plus. I like that episode, like, Art in the Park, I think, uh, where he, like, didn't understand art. Like, that just gave him a little bit of depth, and I liked that. Uh, he's just fun. Like, and, he, and again, Weird Al. Like, how could I not like him? Leslie? I love Leslie. I love Les Leslie so much. Uh, but also because I love her and Mr. Big, so we're just gonna grab Mr. Big, put him up there. Uh, I, they used to, they, before they would have been, like, in the, like, lowest categories for me, just because I didn't care about them. Like, their episodes were just like, oh, it's them again. But upon, like, mostly because I was waiting for the Toby and Two Burns episodes, let's be clear. Uh, but, like, going back... I love them so much. Mr. Big is a big dumb himbo man, and I appreciate that. I think it's hilarious. Uh, Leslie is just so tired and grumpy, but she still, she still keeps, like, fighting for him anyways. I think the episode Yes Monkey was the one that really sold me on them. Uh, and I love them. And... Them is a ship underrated, so I will provide the content that no one else will. Their, their major villains in uh, our uh, upcoming, uh, whatchamacallit, continuation thing. So keep an eye out for that. Leslie gets more more stuff to do. Uh, Little Mittens? Little Miss Mittens goes in yes. Not because Little Mittens like has any character, but because... That, ep that, that episode is amazing. Lady Redundant Woman goes right up there. I will die for you, but only once. Uh, she's just so fun. Like, she's relatable. She's grumpy. She mentions, mentions biting, a cu like, a customer on the leg. And I need to know that story. I... She's just fun. Her episodes are fun. Her motives are fun. Her repetition thing is, is always funny. She's just so done with life. And I love her. Maria goes in, eh. 
like, her one episode where she talks is, I love that, and I love her being friends with, uh, whatchamacallit, the birthday girl, Eileen, but she doesn't do much in her episodes, like, and most of the time her episodes are the ones that are more focused on, like, everyone else other than the villains, which, on the one hand, can be a good thing, but also I just don't care about uh, a lot of other characters as much as I care about the villains, so. Next is the masked, masked meat marauder, and, like, I don't even remember his episode, like, who is this dude? Uh, it says something that I remember his name, but, like, I don't remember anything about him aside from his name. Miss mm. Power? I, she goes all the way to the top, not because I would actually die for her, but because she's an S-tier villain. She's, like, she's terrifying. Her voice acting, first of all, is really good. Her episode is just really good. And digging into the, like, the, the damage that she could have caused if this weren't a PBS kids show is fascinating to me. Because her whole thing is, like, words and making people helpless with words. And if she didn't have that PBS kids filter on, like, if she was able to, like, demolish people, like, full-on emotionally demolish people, what would she have done? I... I wrote a fan fiction about that. You can read it on AO3 now. Because I'm, I'm, I'm cringe. Um, but like that's that's terrifying, and I'm so fascinated by that. So she goes in S tier. This question. She goes in no hard feelings. Like first of all, her writing is just ten out of ten. Like they have the they have her speaking in questions actually be natural instead of like super jarring, uh, and. The fact that she can just absolutely destroy people mentally uh, with by making them question everything is horrific, and I find that fascinating. Next is, I don't know if this is, I think this is Mr. Cheese. Mr. Cheese, uh, he goes in no hard feelings. Most of the time I just wouldn't care, but then I found out that I'm pretty, upon rewatching the series, I'm pretty sure... He's the mouse we see at the end of Mouse Army. And I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it's my personal headcanon, and that puts him up for me. No can the contrarian. He goes in eh, because I, I... His name... His name and his concept are super funny, and his delivery on everything is super funny, but I just, I just can't care about him. And I said Violet's cat. Violet's cat goes in no hard feelings because... Oh, I spelled feelings wrong. I just realized that. Oh, well, too late to change it now. Uh, she goes out here because she knows word girl's identity, and I think that's funny. And Huggy's, like, kissing her in the background. I think it's Say It Again, Eileen, but it could be a different episode. He's just, like, hugging her and kissing her. And I don't know what's going on, but it made me laugh. And, um, 10 out of 10. Amazing. No hard feelings. Mostly she'd go in eh, except for those details. Uh, I don't, I don't even know this dude's name. He goes down there. I think he was in one episode. I, I know he was in the background of Plain Old Mischief Makers, but I don't remember what episode he was actually in. So, no feelings. Uh, this dude? I also can't remember who that dude is. Uh, Rhyme. I'm sorry, Reason. This is Reason. Uh, he goes in... Uh, yes. I love Rhyme and Reason. Their episode is mostly so fun. Like, and they're just... They just got a fun dynamic. And... My my only issue with them is, A, that we didn't get to see more of them. B, I can't tell whether they're siblings or friends or lovers. Like, uh, I prefer them as siblings, but, like, honestly, it seems like they're not siblings. So I don't know anymore. I don't know. Uh, but, good. Yeah, Rhyme goes right up there with him. Uh, Reginald? Reginald is the worst. 10 out of 10. Um, uh, what's her name? Rose? I think that's- her name is Rose. Um, she goes in yes, because she's had a lot of interesting potential. Like, she had a lot of potential, like, as someone who knows Word Girl's identity, her episode was fun, she was a cool character, and I'm sad she didn't come back. My hottest take of them all. I love the royal dandy. His episodes- I love him. He's the worst. Don't get me wrong, he's terrible. But I love him, and I love the idea of Lady Redundant Woman uh, being his uh, begrudging adoptive mom. And that's why it's going to be canon in our continuation. 
it's canon. Royal Dandy is a frequent character. And also still needs a voice actor. Please, somebody help. Uh, Sally Botsford. She goes in no hard feelings because she's super fun. Hmm. She goes in no hard feelings because she's super funny. But I I'm not, like, attached to her as a character. She's just really funny. Scoops. He goes in yes because he can be the worst sometimes, but I appreciate that he is at least clearly the worst. Like, I appreciate that he is consistently the worst sometimes. I mean, like, no, not even, not that. Like, at least whenever he's, like, being annoying, usually they're not painting him as, like, a good friend. So, like, in those moments, I mean. It's complicated. So, I'm fine with him. Good little guy. He's fun. Seymour. He goes in no hard feelings only because his, like, the episode Tell Her What She's Won is so fun. O Bo Handsome's only actual episode appearance, and I love Bo Handsome. And, like, in that episode, he was just fun and crazy. And as much as I don't care for his other episodes, that was, that brought him up. Squeaky, he also goes in no hard feelings. I do have hard feelings, but he's an interesting idea for a character. Like, he's important and interesting. So as much as I do have hard feelings for him, I don't, like, dislike him. This guy? He goes in no hard feelings, too, because I can't bring myself to hate him. Uh, I can't actually remember his name, but I, I don't even know if it was said. But, uh, next, uh, S Steve McLean. Steve McLean, yes. Not because I act, like, I really, really care about him, but because as someone who suffered from OCD for a long time, still do a little bit, uh... He is literally just a walking OCD stereotype, and that is the funniest crap in the world to me. Um, I love that so much. Uh, so yeah, I'm attached to him. Steven Boxleitner. Uh, he goes up the, up in... Oh uh, no, wait, I'm messing everything up. No! Okay, uh, he goes up in the very top tier because he's a sweet little cinnamon roll. Dr. Two Brains, of course, also goes up there. 10 out of 10. Uh... Just my ADHD theater kid man. Thank you, Empress Twilight Raven, for showing me the Dr. Two Brains light and for showing me that he is indeed an ADHD theater man. Uh, Tim Botsford. He goes in yes because he's just doing his best. Good dad. Uh, he makes me. He makes me laugh. I love him. I like him more than Sally. Uh, Sally's voice is really funny, but I just like him more than Sally. This dude, I think he's only in one episode, but I can't remember anything he did. So he goes in, don't know or care, because part of me is attached to him. Because I'm like, he only appeared once, why didn't he get to come back? But, Tiny Big, I don't care about Tiny Big. Tiny Big, go to the bottom. I mean, technically he should go in, don't know or care, because I don't really care, but... I'm gonna put him in. Don't, I'm gonna put him in gun. Uh, kid math. I would die for kid math. I would die for this little man, innocent little bean, protected all costs. He needs to be shielded from the world. Also, like whenever he and Violet are interacting, he does this like cute little kick after whenever he's talking about her. I I refuse to believe that he doesn't uh have a crush on her, and I think that's the the cutest darn thing. TJ, uh, he goes in no hard feelings because he makes me laugh sometimes, and uh, I can't bring myself to dislike him. Toby, Toby is the reason I got into the show. Toby is for Toby is lo uh, Toby is love. Toby is life. Uh, I will die for Toby. That's why he's gonna be like a really big character and the continuation. Because he's part of why we made it. Uh, I love him. I'm a Toby stan. And I understand why people don't like him. But I love him. Okay. So I... Let's do the whammer first. He goes in yes. He's so loud and rambunctious. And just a man child. Uh, I love him. I love that he calls Chuck Chucky Breadhead. I think... I don't know why. It just makes me giggle makes me laugh like a little girl and he's just la like his voice actor is just very good like props to him 
he's just loud and obnoxious and I find him endearing. Most people don't care about him, but he's also just like a sweet, sweet guy. I like uh, Silence of the Whams, where we just get to see him trying to be good. Like, trying to be good, being scared of bubbles. Um, like, he doesn't have an evil bone in his body, I feel like. Like, he likes to destroy things. But it never feels like he's, like, malicious as much as he just kind of wants to destroy things. The one time he does anything like that is... I can't remember what episode it is. Uh, but where he, uh, like, throws... Huggy into space because he wants to be Weird Girl's sidekick, and that's like the one like actually malicious thing I think he ever does, uh, or like that I can think of him ever doing. Uh, and I, little baby, 10 out of 10. Now, Violet, this is a hot take. Okay, I changed the wrong tears color. This website is broken. Angie. No. 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 Work. No. Y'all, this website is broken. It's not my fault. Uh, Violet goes to... Violet. Similar to Chaz, Violet has her own tear. I hate Violet. This is a hot take. She makes me laugh. And she's okay in the early episodes. Like, she's fine in the early episodes. But, uh, she gets so butthurt about things sometimes. Like, it's not like she can't be hurt about things, but she gets so butthurt and blamey, uh, over things. She, she, like, starts, like, crying and, like, getting super mad whenever Becky says she's uncomfortable at her house. Which is, like, yeah, she's allowed to be hurt, but, like, getting super mad at Becky because Becky has, like, valid reasons for being uncomfortable at her house, like, chill, girly, set some boundaries, like, friends, friends are allowed to have boundaries, oh, I have to put her under, uh, don't know or care, whoops, uh, let me, let me move her down, yeah, she goes at the very bottom, uh, and her, her delivery is super funny, like, her delivery is super funny, her, plenty of her jokes are super funny, but, then there's Ryman, uh, Rhyme and Reason is the episode that I particularly hate her. Um, like, yeah, her her ditching Becky is super sad, but also, like, she's just blowing it way out of proportion, I feel like. Like, yes, this was a big secret. She's allowed to be upset about it. But even Scoops, like, he mentions being hurt, but he doesn't, like, stop being friends with Becky over it. Violet literally says, like, all you've ever done is lie to me. And it's like, no. She literally didn't. Like, she literally didn't. She, oh, uh, she has done so much for you, Violet. You've been friends for a long time. Long time. All she's ever done is lie to me. That's just not true, first of all. Second of all, you liked Word Girl like five seconds ago, so chill. Also, as multiple people have pointed out to me, um... It seems like, like, she wins a lot of things and then gets kind of mad whenever Becky does something better than she does. I don't know. I just, I hate her. I hate Violet. Uh, but whatever the case, them's materialist. Uh, yeah. There you go. It was fun to do. I needed an excuse, I needed an excuse to talk about a bunch of characters that I like in the show. And to plug uh, my continuation. So please go check that out. Uh, please go check out the person who made the tier list. And the video that inspired me. Again, I'll be linking those. And thanks for watching and listening to my rambles. And my poor audio quality. Uh, see ya.